My name is Rebecca Parsons, and I am one of your recurring hosts for the ThoughtWorks Technology Podcast. And I am joined today um, by four individuals, a little uh, more people than we normally have. Um, We are going to be talking about uh, a book that is uh, just coming out um, called Head First Architecture. And the authors are Neil Ford, who is one of our co-hosts. Hello, everyone. You'll recognize my voice for sure. Uh, Mark Richards. Yep. Hi, everyone. Raju Gandhi. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah. And Sarah Gray. Thanks for having me. So my understanding is that this Head First series has a very particular format or, and approach to materials. So why don't we start with what makes a head first book a head first book? Well, as a development editor at O'Reilly, um, I'll take that one. Um, head first is a special series. Uh, O'Reilly publishes a lot of different series with different formats. This one um, tends to be, first of all, much bigger, um, and second, designed in a very different way. Um, it's meant to engage the entire brain. So there's art, there are hands-on exercises, there are bits of story, there are jokes, there are annotations in the margins, all sorts of things um, in order to engage every kind of learner, whether you're a visual learner, um, like even a kinesthetic learner, you can you know, pull the code samples off of a repository and play with them yourself. Uh, so this isn't a passive reading experience. It's a very active one. Um, and you know, during my time at O'Reilly, I've actually found it to be by far the best way for me personally to learn coding skills. Uh, it seems to be the only thing that makes them stick. Um, we did a lot of custom art for this uh, particular book uh, in a, a very comic book sort of style. And I think people will really enjoy it. I like to say this is almost like a, a comic book and a technical book got together and merged uh, and had a baby. Uh, that's basically a head first book. Yes, exactly. I, I prefer to use the term uh, graphic novel, actually, because it <laughs> felt like I was writing one with this book. <laughs> I, I, I have to say that, uh, and then this is a story I've told Mark and Neil before, uh, my uh, wife's uncle, who spent a lot of time in the education space, uh, looked at my previous book, uh, Head First Git, and as he was sort of flipping through it, he saw, you know, a section. He saw an exercise. He saw quizzes. He saw um, sort of a narrative through the chapter, and he looked at me and said, "This looks like a fun textbook." And that's when it dawned on me that that's essentially what O'Reilly is going for is making a textbook, but much more approachable and fun uh, rather than just being prosy and, and dry. But one of the interesting challenges for us, as Sarah said, it's it's really designed. So the kind of canonical uh, book is uh, head first design patterns uh, because it takes a very you know visual approach to that. But there, most of the books in the head first series are like Raju's previous book, Head First Git or Head First Python. They're very concrete, very coding centric, you know, very small, discrete exercises. And that was one of the big challenges we faced in this book because software architecture is pretty abstract. So how do you have an exercise every three pages about software architecture when you need to build up so much context? So that was an interesting challenge for us who've written about software architecture in different media, uh, but this one feels completely different. Well, and I, I I think the other the other thing I noticed after, well, what was it, uh, Raju and, and Neil? Two years, actually, I think. <laughs> right, Sarah? Two years of writing this book. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I actually noticed is a big difference uh, as an author for the Head First um, books was the actual kind of style of writing. Um, Neil and I, of course, wrote the uh, fundamentals of software architecture together, as well as uh, software ac- architecture, the hard parts. And we embarked on this project as um, initially, and <clears throat> Neil always joked about this, oh, this will be filler work for us. Well, this was a major project. And part of that was the difference in the style of writing. 
uh, each uh, uh, consolidating topics. Uh, Each page effectively became a kind of a work of art. And although there are words, uh, it was a different style of writing than in our other books. Uh, The use of diagrams and figures and characters asking questions. And uh, the bottom line is I really felt as an author uh, was more connecting with the reader through the headfirst books than in our other books. I kind of felt through Neil, our other two books, that uh, we're, we're, we're really telling people about all these things, telling the audience, telling the reader about this. But for some reason, as, as I was writing the, some of the chapters in, in Head First, it became like I was actually with the reader and kind of holding their hand and showing them things and following through and communicating with them. And that was a, that was a really, uh, it was an interesting aspect of the book. Yep. One of the, uh, and it's, it's a mistake to think that there's just this big giant pile of artwork and you can sort of sift through it and use it any way you want to. So, and my analogy to this is this is much more like writing a sonnet in poetry. You know, sonnets have a very strict structure, you know, it has to be a certain number of syllables, number of lines and rhyming scheme. And head first is exactly that way. And you have to learn all these things. So there are these specific characters like Skeptical Girl, but she can only be used in specific situations as specific transitions and not too much, but not too little. And so, you know, finding the sweet spot for what we we sort of uh, affectionately slash der- derisively called the little doodads of uh, head first, little characters and the iconography and the graphics and all that stuff and figuring out, you know, where to use that, when it's appropriate, what it's there for, and, you know, making it part of the flow of the story is a a very interesting challenge. Absolutely. This is a series that's been around for about 30 years now. um, And it's been, the pedagogy has been developed in this really specific way. Um, So it it was very much a a challenge to not only master that, um, but then to integrate it with a much more abstract concept like software architecture uh, than we usually do on these books. And I, I think the result is, uh, is is really accessible as well as fun. So I'll give you an example of where we cheated on the head first style. In most head first books, you can't have any examples that extend past one chapter, but there's just no way you can make everything in software architecture completely self-contained. So we created a couple of what we call sidecar chapters, which are basically taking a step away from the sort of educational stuff we're doing, and it's just solving problems using all the steps that we've built up the chapters before that. So we have a couple of those which are basically just purely implementation chapters. They're called do-it-yourself chapters, and they're very much designed to reinforce the sort of abstract steps we've been leading up to, but kind of glue it back together uh, to make it a little more holistic, uh, because it's so you can't write a book about architecture where every chapter cannot connect to the others. It's just too tough. So, so you all have been enthusing about uh, this format. Have have you just given up on sales of the other two books? I mean, can, can you talk a little bit about how uh, the 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 books uh, relate to each other? Absolutely, I'll start, and then let the other two authors uh, chime in. We have not given up on the other two books. This is, you know, uh, Mark and I also do online classes and videos too. And I actually don't like learning about technical subjects through video, but I know a lot of people do. Uh, I actually don't care much for the head first style when I'm trying to learn something, unless it's something you know extremely concrete like Git. Or, but I I sort of facetiously refer to this as the ADD guide to technology because there are all these interruptions and, you know, sidebars. And I actually prefer just regular prose, you know, as dense as you can get it. But I realize that that's not true for everybody. So Mark and I are very conscious of trying to basically write stuff in every medium we can find because people, you know, consume and learn things in different uh, ways. And so this helps facilitate that. Uh, But that's just one of the many differences. I'll let the other two dive into some more. And I think as as Neil's fond of saying, if you draw a Venn diagram of our fundamentals of software architecture and also then the head first software architecture, they don't exactly meet. Uh, there are things that we were able to introduce after 
what was that, Neil? Four years. Four years since our Fundamentals of Software Architecture has been released. Uh, things that, in hindsight, we wish we would have added to the Fundamentals book, but also things that we wanted to add but didn't have room for. So we had the opportunity, for example, uh, uh, specifically one of the chapters Raju worked on uh, was uh, something we didn't even introduce uh, within. And I'll, I'll let Raju talk about that one. But uh, but things that uh, entire chapters that weren't even in the fundamentals book. Um, um, so there is uh, quite an overlap. But also, I think um, part of the primary difference originally, uh, Neil and I thought, well, the reason this is probably a filler work is because we've already written the fundamentals. We just need to lift that into a different format. <laughs> Neil, you still owe me for that. <laughs> <laughs> because nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, that was our original intention until um, Raju started teaching us the, uh, well, and Sarah started teaching us the head first style and like, Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> There's a lot of differences in this. And part of it is just the way we went about describing and teaching a particular concept. Uh, you may read about characteristics, architecture characteristics, for example, in our fundamentals book. And you turn to the chapter on architecture characteristics in the head first book, and it's entirely different teachings. And it's that style that I gained uh, appreciation for as writing the head first book. And this has transcended into a lot of my uh, training classes that I teach, both online and also in person, in just ways I explain some really abstract concepts. Yeah, I can, I can give you a concrete example of what Mark is talking about. One of the things that we purposely did not talk about in the Fundamentals of Software Architecture book was the difference between uh, design and architecture, because it's a, a you know it's a, such a sticky subject and it's so nuanced, and, and we purposely just did not, we just kind of avoided that in the Fundamentals book. But because of the target audience for this book, we thought, we felt compelled that we really should address that in this book. So in the first chapter of this book, we dive into into the real difference between architecture versus design. But I think because we wrote this book a few years ago, we keep getting asked this question over and over, and we've come up with, you know, examples and, you know, some thoughts about what is the real difference here. So I think um, the interim uh, time between the books helped uh, in uh, some insights that we wrote about in this one. One thing that I didn't mention when you asked about the differences between head first format and other formats is there's a constraint on how you think about uh, teaching a concept. And that is typically you have a page to introduce a concept. There is no overflow. So you can't just keep writing prose. And if it flows into the next page, just put a page break and go to the next one. You have a page to describe a concept. But more importantly, you can only describe one concept per page. In other words, you can't have two different concepts simultaneously introduced in the book. And I think that really, as, a, as someone who had consumed both of Mark and Neil's books previous to this uh, and joining them on this project, I think teasing that apart, forcing us to think about how can we introduce each topic separately, building on what we already have, really distilled uh, and, and clarified many ideas. And to Mark's point, you know, we, we had to come up with analogies, examples to I explain ideas. Um, I think that's one really big difference. Uh, the other one, which is we introduced uh, more material than is in, uh, uh, and, and skipped some, right? We didn't want an exact overlap between the two. Um, and then to Mark's point, we had the opportunity to dive much deeper, uh, especially into things like the four dimensions of describing architecture. Uh, we have a chapter dedicated to each dimension, uh, which lays the foundation before we get into the architectural styles. And that wasn't something that was in Mark and Neil's book, not explicitly. It was there hidden in the subtext, but it wasn't there explicitly. 
I think this book also provides a great jumping off point if you're interested in software architecture and you're feeling like you don't necessarily have an entry point, this is that entry point. And then you go on to the fundamentals book from there. Yeah, I think this is a, a perfect on-ramp, particularly if you're not quite have enough experience to understand the fundamentals book completely, because in terms of what they both cover, so we've been talking about the, where they don't overlap, but where they do overlap are things like uh, discussion about architecture characteristics, but in a, uh, a much longer, more drawn out way than we did, much many more examples than we did in the fundamentals book, but we cover a lot fewer architecture styles because we just don't have the room. Uh, this is a very expansive way of writing a book. Uh, and so we basically covered if you the three parts of the fundamentals book. Part one was so intro and characteristics, part two was styles, and part three were the soft skills. Uh, we basically covered uh, chunks of part one uh, and about half of part two and then little bits of part three in the head first book. But, you know, the parts in part three, like ADRs that we only covered lightly in the fundamentals book, we cover really extensively in this book. So there's there's actually quite a bit of, uh, of uh, differentiation uh, and uh a more streamlined approach to the things that show up in both books. As a matter of fact, I would say, having written both, <laughs> that the books are very, when I say the books, the fundamentals of software architecture and architecture, uh, uh, the head first software architecture, are very complementary uh, to one another. Uh, in other words, uh, different audiences may have different ways of being able to learn about a particular concept. Uh, however, um, maybe reading a part of the chapter on characteristics, which is a good example, and then going over to the fundamentals book and reading the corresponding chapters that have to do with characteristics, um, both would actually complement each other and, and vice versa. Kind of reading one of the chapters of, head, of, of fundamentals and scratching your head and saying, um, yeah, I, you know what? I just don't get it. And going over to the head first book, seeing if we cover that piece, reading and going, ah, now I see exactly what you were talking about. And so I think in a lot of ways, uh, the books are very complementary to each other as opposed to uh, overlapping material. Well, I, I would think it would be challenging to say the least after having laid out conceptually and you know, put in the effort of how you're organizing the material for the fundamentals book and then say, OK, let's toss that out the window and start over. What, what was your approach for deciding which of the chunks to include and not include? And, and were there principles in, in how you would approach something in the head first book? Um, to sort of reimagine it in, in, in that way. You know, obviously this is, uh, I'm inferring that this is much more example driven. And we certainly saw this with the evolutionary architecture book, uh, particularly around fitness functions is it really helps people to have concrete examples to, to think about. But what, what kind of was the philosophy and, and approach to taking this body of knowledge that you had characterized in one way and now characterizing it in a very different way? One of the, one of the starting points <clears throat> was the fact that uh, um, all of us, including Sarah, are in different uh, geographical areas here within the United States. So uh, one of the first things we did was to learn more about the style. And that's where Raju really helped us at the beginning, not only with some of the architecture stuff and the content, but uh, really Raju and Sarah just kind of teaching us the headfirst style. Uh, that was absolutely necessary to come up with our narrative arc for the book because certain topics lend themselves, I think, to the headfirst style. And Neil and I recognized other things we wrote about aren't going to. But part of it, Rebecca, that I think was the core crux of our narrative arc was the realization when we put a spreadsheet together of, well, if we're talking about one page per topic and exercises every two to three pages, 
Uh, this is going to be about a 15,000 page book. And that realization, <laughs> we just took a machete to our fundamentals book and said, yeah, we could probably maybe cover a quarter of it, maybe. And that was one of the drivers to really pick out a solid narrative arc about really the topic of what is architecture? And pulling out the relevant pieces from a head first style that would lend themselves towards uh, visualizations and metaphors and analogies and exercises. So, um, so that really uh, was for me the thing that started to drive really the, the topics that we were going to cover or did cover in the book. So it turns out that Mark and I are on like this 15 year refinement cycle uh, for material because when we first started talking about it, the first conversation we had about a book about software architecture, we're like, there's no way you could write that down. The, the topic is just too big. It's too multifaceted. There's too many nuances. And what we did by doing training classes and conference talks, et cetera, is filtered that down to the fundamentals of software architecture book. But then we had to look at that corpus and then say, okay, now can we refine it and filter it down even more? So I, this is a question probably for Mark and Raju. Is it humanly possible to write a book about software architecture that filters any of this material less? I think this may be the smallest possible chunk of IP that would completely describe software architecture. I don't think we can refine it anymore. Uh, but, you know, so... So authors think about the horror of Mark and I sat down uh, with a spreadsheet and tried to come up because with the titles of 450 pages, because every page has to have a unique title indicating the topic. And so, and, you know, like every outline that you do for a book, we ended up throwing almost all of those things away as we started writing it. But it was really useful up front to kind of get a, because we were afraid, to Mark's point, that we we're just going to start writing this thing. And then, you know, at a thousand pages in, it's like, what are we going to be done with this thing? You know, we're, we're and so, you know, getting a, our heads around it and, and starting that sifting, refining process, which continued as we were writing the chapters. Uh, every chapter I wrote, I bumped into at least a couple of topics where, oh, we're going to talk about this, but. Oh, that's going to be eight pages. I don't have eight pages of budget that I can talk about that, you know, for the setup and the transition and the exercises and all that. So that that also, uh, to your to your original question, Rebecca, the, the format itself helps filter things down to a certain uh, core. I'm certain that most of us, or at least the three authors, have repressed the memories of, of many moments in this project because <laughs> I cannot... I cannot keep count of how many false starts we had. Uh, you know, Neil just alluded to this. You know, the, he and Mark sat down in New York and hashed out this Excel spreadsheet. And then we figured out as we started thinking through what we wanted in the book, uh, we're going to dispense with a lot of that. But even with uh, writing chapters, I still remember writing the chapter about the two laws of software architecture. Uh, I wrote the whole chapter, uh, and then we have uh, uh, the, uh, the editorial crew who now lead O'Reilly's headfirst uh, efforts, look at the chapter and absolutely trash it. But mm -hmm. as part of the commentary that they left behind, we finally realized that the whole chapter doesn't have to be... Uh, a sort of mirror for what's already in the fundamentals book. And it helped us focus, sort of zoom in and say, just focus on the two laws of software architecture. And so we trashed the entire chapter and rewrote it from the ground up. And 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 that actually helped us focus the next two chapters of the book. So I think we had a lot of false starts. I know we Mark's gone down this road where he's written 16 pages and then realized oh no, this is a dead end, but you can't just delete three paragraphs and refocus. You have to go back to the beginning of the chapter and rewrite the entire narrative because there's a storyline, there's an arc, there are characters and there are constraints that come in. So I think, you know, from a challenge perspective, and this happened to me when head first Git, I can't remember how many chapters I had to throw away just because I hit that dead end and there's no way to recover. 
Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges of Head First. Uh, it, it's super focused, but if you don't aim correctly from page one, you're just going to go to back page one and try all over again. There's no recouping in the middle of a chapter. We did a lot of troubleshooting different metaphors, <laughs> playing with them, trying to see if they could stick. Um, and I think one of the other challenges too was, um, you know, bringing it down to that filtered level where people who are new to the field are going to understand, um, you know, so with three authors who are super geniuses and spend their whole day immersed in software architecture, my role was sort of to ask the obvious questions um, that a reader might ask. Well, Sarah, um, you ended up being kind of, at least in my opinion, our, our hero in the book because Neil and I just started, well, all, all of us, of course, Raju, you had your 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 Git, um, uh, head first Git, but poor Neil and I are just like, let's just write. And well, um, Sarah and also Raju were both um, very instrumental in saying, um, yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. Oh, let's let's start over. And um, that that it was a big it was a steep learning curve. I think that was one of the biggest challenges was that that first couple of chapters each uh, were really a learning process. And at one point, it was such a steep learning curve. And Sarah was there every day. And Raju was helping us understand the dynamics. And and that, that first chapter took so long to write. I sat back and I said, oh, there's no way I can do this. And and it was it was it was like a hockey stick. It started out slow and it's like, oh, I get it now. And and it got better. But but fortunately, Sarah was there to say, no, 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 no. You can't use that character twice in a twice in a uh, uh, a spread. Or Raju would say, ah, 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 ah. nope, nope. You can't you can't say that. You can't use an annotation there like that. And oh boy, why not? It's like, well, you can't. And so <laughs> the the constraints that were placed on us um, were good, solid constraints. But they were still fairly frustrating constraints. <laughs> well, and, and a lot of the learning curve, too, had to do with tooling. So Mark and I, you know, prefer to write in pure text and, you know, use Git as a back end, you know, focus purely on the pros. But in, in Head First, this is in, done in a graphic design tool. So every page is a completely unique layout. And so the, the pros really literally does flow around the graphics and vice versa. So you can't just change the pros without changing the graphics and vice versa. So that makes it very intense. My, I would estimate that of the 450-ish pages that made it in the book, we probably generated 800 pages worth of material and then deleted the uh, 350 that were left over because I know at least the first two chapters I did uh, basically rewrote from the ground up twice before we finally got uh, found the sweet spot. Well, Neil, and to your point, uh, the uh, microservices chapter, which I tackled, um, how do you explain and describe microservices using graphics style in a headfirst book. And uh, that was case in point, about uh, close to 30 or 35 pages and realized, um, nope. As a matter of fact, it was Raju who said, nope, you know, you're going from the top down. You need to go from the bottom up. This is head first. You, you, you're, 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 you're showing everything and then trying to dive in like little spikes and it, it just doesn't work that way. I'm like, well, it looks good to me. And it's like, no, no, no. Scrap, 35 pages, just, just gone. And I said, fine, new head, new pages, let's start over. And mm, wow, Raju, you were right. <laughs> Started, it just, you know, it was just something that I didn't observe and Raju did that, that no, you, you get to start out small and build the triangle um, as a broad base as opposed to the other way around, which is how I was trying to describe it. So yeah, there were, yeah, I would say, you know, it's probably a fairly accurate uh, number of the number of pages that we ended up saying, nope, try that again. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, InDesign does not track that because I would be afraid to look at that number. It would be uh, shockingly depressing. So it just, it just melted away into the ether. Just to close that thread really quickly, InDesign is a horrible collaborator medium. So we were literally acquiring locks on files. It's if Neil's working on chapter four, nobody else work on chapter four, everybody else work on something else. And then, then 
it was texting and semaphore locks and all kinds of shenanigans ensued just because the tooling does not support collaboration so much. Can't tell you how many times I've texted Roger saying, help, I think I did something wrong in the repo. <laughs> <laughs> so given all of these challenges that, that seem uh, unique to the head first style, uh, I mean, just writing a book comes with its own set of challenges, but then you add all of these con constraints that you were talking about. Raju has obviously decided he's okay doing a second head first because he just did. Uh, but Neil, what about Neil and Mark? What what about you two? I mean, are did did you did you feel like this was a worthwhile exercise for the material that you were trying to? to create and, you know, given the amount of trouble it was, uh, would you do it again? So I've, I've been asked this question recently and I, and my stock answer to that has become uh, maybe, but not next and not, <laughs> and not soon. <laughs> Cause it is a, it is a fascinating challenge, you know, especially given a subject matter that Mark and I've talked about and written about and, created videos about and podcasts about so much. And, you know, the the challenge of this book had very little to do with the software architecture stuff. It was how do you get it and massage it into this format, which is interesting. Uh, but it's interesting in both good and bad ways. So, you know, I, I, I think I completely understand the, the pedagogy behind, the pedagogy behind the head first now. And I think that most of what they're doing is is right, but some of it is a little too constrained, in my opinion. And so I think there are places where I would loosen up some of the, the, the strictures a little bit. But, you know, that's probably going to be true for any author. We'll find things that they would prefer to push against. So uh, uh, but that, that aside, you know, I certainly have the uh, have acquired the skills now, but but I'm not looking forward to leaping into another one soon. I'm actually looking quite forward to settling into a chair with uh, Emacs and writing writing some nice long page after page after page of prose with no <laughs> graphics whatsoever anywhere in sight for a while. So. <laughs> that sounds like my kind of book. <laughs> Lots of prose and no diagrams. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I think I'd have to, I'd have to parrot Neil and say um, maybe, but not now. Um, it's uh, it's, it's a huge time commitment. And Raju had given both Neil and I a metric of number of pages per day. Actually, it was number of days per page. And um, <clears throat> I'm like, no, no, no. Are you kidding? Neil and I, I, mean, I, I wrote an entire chapter on a European flights uh, back home. I mean, no, no, Raju, you're wrong. No, Raju, again, was right. <laughs> and that metric was scary because I looked at that. However, um, <clears throat> Uh, I, however much frustrated um, I did get in terms of the time commitment and the rework and stuff, I really, again, did just gain that appreciation for uh, the different way of describing certain concepts and really grew to like it. As a matter of fact, um, you will you will start to, well, probably a lot of you listening have already seen um, annotations slowly appearing in some of our classes and online trainings and, and talks and conference sessions. Uh, just, I started to adopt a lot of the techniques and the style of teaching. And I decided I rather like these little call out annotations in my slides. And, and so, yes, that's what, a, that's a good example of where I started to adopt uh, some of the head for style in my, just my daily practice of writing and working. And so, um, uh, yeah, not, not, not right away though. The frustrating piece is all this skill that I gained, not only in InDesign, but also the techniques. I, I kind of don't, want it to go away, but definitely want a break. <laughs> I actually signed on with Mark. Mark and Neil called me up and said, we would like to work with you on Head First Software Architecture. And I signed on that project before Head First Git was over. Um, so I, I definitely am a glutton for punishment. <laughs> uh, I literally went back to back with two head first books. And there is, depending on where my head sits in maybe a month or two months from now, the chance of a third one uh, collaborating with somebody else on a head first book. But I'm going to 
I'm going to really think through that one before I sign on. <laughs> well, and I think Raj, you you know, has is in in danger of, or you know, will benefit from becoming the the head first whisperer because he understands he's encyclopedic on this the uh, the head first style, and that, it's actually worth saying. I think uh, the the order of names on the head first software architecture with Raj, his name comes first because we didn't want people to think that he's just there because he's the head first whisperer. He brought a lot of subject matter to this book as well, and if his name is the last one on the list, everybody's just going to think, oh, he's just there because he knows all the head first stuff, which he does in his encyclopedic, but he's also a good subject matter expert. So I think that's going to constrain Raju. It's, he's going to want to write about stuff that he knows about, not just to, as the uh, the head first whisperer. So we're quickly going to find out, you know, the, the series of topics that Raju feels comfortable enough to uh, to expound about. Uh, we'll, we'll turn into head first books. Since <laughs> Fortunately, there are lots of those. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a real shame to, for Ajou to, to lose. I mean, he really does now have an encyclopedic. Oh, yeah, you can do that. That was in the Head First Agile book on page, you know, in the, like in the 200s or something. I mean, it's just a really amazing how much he has uh, incorporated that. And he's become uh, uh, an encyclopedia for uh, Head First. Well, I, I, I will admit when Sarah was first introducing the um, the concept of the Head First book, and she said they tend to be larger, and I recalled just how many pages were in the fundamentals of software architecture. I was a, a little nervous, I, I will say, but the, the, the 400s, you know, that seems <laughs> that that seems doable. But I would like to thank all of you, Neil, Mark, Raju, and Sarah, for talking with me today about uh, the Head First Software Architecture book and the Head First series, the Head First approach as well as as how these books relate to the other software architecture books that uh, both Neil and, and Mark have collaborated on in the past. So thank you all. Thank you. It's, thank uh, you. it's a privilege to be here and huge fan of the Thought Words podcast. I'm glad to be on one episode at least. <laughs> Yeah, and it's good to it's good to be back, Rebecca. So thank you. <laughs> yep, and thanks for having us. And now I will now get up and walk to the other side of the room uh, where the hosts sit. So. <laughs> okay. Thanks everyone. <laughs> thanks everybody. Bye bye. <laughs>